Welcome to Mrs. Peach Thrifty Levine. I'm so happy you're here today. I thought I would try to do a video outside if it doesn't get too noisy. This is the house, the little studio my son built during the pandemic. He decided he wanted to build one and so he went on YouTube, studied a while, worked a while, and this is the result. It's really cute. And someday it can be moved. It's uh, he, they can put it on skids and move it. So with that being said, I want to get started. This will be the second episode of my family's, my grandpa, the one that had 18 children. And I started off with my grandpa last time. And so this time I'm starting with the, their birth order. And I probably will have to put my glasses on for some of this to see it. And I hope you enjoy this. If you like this, like and subscribe. Come back again, because I will put this in a playlist. And it's called Story Time and something else. And I'll, I'll put it across the screen, because sometimes you get the video and you can't remember everything you want to say. First one born to my grandma and grandpa was Lowell. He was born in December. And Dr. Moss was his, his doctor. Lowell was named after him. How'd they name him after that? Okay, somehow they figured that out. Some of the things Lowell remembers are that they were disciplined at home. They, they would be spanked by their father, and he would, he would discipline the boys. But the girls got disciplined by their mama. Lowell was seen by the other children as the one to carry out their father's orders. Okay, daddy said it, you got to do it, okay? Lowell was to be the boss if their dad wasn't around, you know, being the oldest. Lowell said some of the chores he had to do as a small child was to go into the woods and gather sticks and twigs for the fire. He also had to stack the wood up outside of the house. As Lowell got older, he was to help work in the cotton fields and the farm. When he was about 12 years old, a man by the name of Lucas came to live at their house and help. They also had a person by the name of John, who was an Indian. Charlie acted as guardian to him. That's the daddy. These people were treated as one of the family. The holidays that were celebrated most then was Thanksgiving and Christmas. And on Sunday, they would spend most of their time in church. Lowell became a Christian as a young boy. Lowell remembers Grandpa Mac and Grandma Mac, who used to stay with them. He remembers Grandma Mac as a small, frail, sickly woman. He thinks that she may have been an Indian. He said Grandpa Mac came to Oklahoma when he was about three. Then they went back to Tennessee, and then to Texas, and then Arkansas, and then back to Oklahoma. He remembers relatives and other people stopping by their house a lot and staying. Any, anyone that stopped was made to feel welcome and become part of the family. Lowell married Lily. I think we called her Lyle, Lily. And they had two sons. Zell was born in uh, 1934 and he died in October of that same. So he was a month old when he died. And then they had another child, another son, and he was born dead. That's sad. He, I, I think he might have been one of the only ones that did not have um, very many children. Number two son was Miriam, and he was born in 1909, and he married Nell. They had three children. Miriam died in 1966, so he died quite a bit younger than most of them. He, he died from injuries suffered in an accident at the Kerr Dam and Lock Project. 
a heavy truck load of lumber fell on me. That's sad. Miriam only had a sight in one eye most of his life. Being born that way, Miriam used to whistle all the time. He could play a guitar and was a good singer. I didn't know that about him. One time, Cecil and Nanny was going to help Miriam to get the cotton in from their field so that, they, that he could help them in their, when their cotton was ready to be got in the next night. Nell became upset about something and came out in the field to get Miriam. Walking out to the field barefooted, she asked Miriam and Cecil what they were doing. After she found out, she turned around and went back in the house and decided to get herself fixed up really pretty. She fixed her hair, put her makeup on, and put on the nicest dress she had, her, and she put on high heels. Out she goes marching in the field in her high heel shoes, when all of a sudden, here came a great big burst of thunder and down came the rain. Nell was about halfway across the field at that time. She turned and took off running back to the house, getting drenched all the way. You know, different ones told about this and, and you didn't know, nobody told that. So I'm just reading. Now, I, I'm gonna do one more because I see I'm gonna get too long. Number three, and this was Osser. And um, there was not much written about him, so I called his daughter, Pat. If you remember going this summer when we went to our family reunion, she was with us a lot. And I called her and I asked her some what she remembered. So this is what they wrote, and then she gave me some things to, to say. So he was born, Arthur was born in 1911 in the same place, Blackgum. He married Jewel on my birthday, June 29th. That was 1929, back in Oklahoma. They had four children and he died in 1980. Arthur was, was a very kind and compassionate man, that he was a good Christian man. Getting a little warm out here. His daughter, Pat, said she remembers he was a quiet man. He spoke up whenever he was young. Like I said, he was number three. His job was to help with the laundry. And he didn't like washing those dirty diapers. That was no small job for all of those kids. Remember, there was 18. Of course, not all of them was born at that time, but the time he got old enough to help with the wash, there would probably have been several other little babies when he and his wife were young, he was working in the field, and on the way home, he saw a pecan tree. It was loaded with, with pecans, and he knew his wife loved pecans. He wanted to take some home to her, but he didn't have anything to put, put them in, so he took his pants off, and he tied the legs up. And there he filled the legs up with the pecans. So then, he didn't have any pants on, so he had to sneak through the brush where nobody had seen him. It must have been getting a little bit dark, and he made it home without anybody seeing him. He had a seventh grade education, and he loved to read. He just read, and the kids loved it a lot, and he passed that love of classic um, books on to his children also. And he was great at math. He could come up with math problems in his head before his daughter that started running a tin key like a calculator or in the calculator. He would come up with the answer before she could. He was a water well driller and he told his daughter he would have loved to have been an archaeologist because he loved to see so much of the earth and see what, what was in the earth. Later, he worked at a sawmill, and that's when he was able to use a lot of his um, meth. A strong, patient man, man of God, who loved his God and raised his family to love Jesus. They were always involved in church. That was my uncle, Arthur. Next one will, be, will begin with, it will be my daddy. He was number four. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll come back every time 
and join me on little stories and I hope it makes you remember some stories of your family. Write them down. They're going to be memories someday. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll come back for the next one. And in the meantime, I'll have several different other ones coming out. And just uh, like and subscribe if you haven't. Comment. Share if you know somebody that would like it. And I'll see you next time. God bless you special.